Now, a giant slab of ice bigger than the Spanish island of Mallorca has sheared off from the frozen edge of Antarctica into the Weddell Sea, becoming the largest iceberg afloat in the world. The newly carved iceberg, which scientists are calling A76, has a surface area that spans over 4,000 square kilometers and was spotted in recent satellite images by the European Space Agency. Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Sue Cook, who's a glaciologist with the Australian Antarctic Programme Partnership at the University of Tasmania. Thank you very much for joining me, uh, Dr. Cook. Um, why has this happened? It's part of a natural process in Antarctica. So the Antarctic ice sheet continuously gains ice through snowfall and then loses it at the edges through melting and the production of icebergs. So this is part of a normal cycle that we see down there. OK, uh, do we know? I mean, it, it seems enormous, you know, bigger than Mallorca, but uh, apparently it's, it's not sort of up there in the pantheon of top 10 biggest icebergs. It's pretty large, um, but no, definitely not the biggest that we've ever observed. It is the biggest currently in the Southern Ocean around Antarctica, but um, there definitely have been bigger in the past. OK, and, and do we know if it will have any impact on sea levels as, as it sort of deteriorates and moves off? So actually, icebergs don't have a direct impact on the sea levels at all. Um, once ice is already floating, then it doesn't impact sea level around it. It's a little bit like if you have an ice cube in a drink. As the ice cube melts, the drink never overflows. So in that sense, it's not going to directly affect sea level at the moment. Well, what about salinity? Yeah, it can have impacts on salinity and the movement of icebergs around the southern ocean um, really directly affects the ocean conditions and the ecosystems down there. So for us, it's really important to have an understanding of exactly how it's going to move and where it'll end up. And do you know? Do you know where it's going to end up? And does that, does that matter where it ends up? Unfortunately, it's notoriously difficult to predict where these big icebergs will go. They're driven along by winds and also by ocean currents. And as you can imagine, um, kind of predicting those things far in advance can be very challenging. It's going to move roughly kind of west and north towards the Antarctic Peninsula. And it might end up in a similar track to the one that last year was threatening South Georgia. OK. And as it's sort of moving off, I mean, what sort of um, experiments and research is able to be done on this iceberg? And how important is it to the Antarctic research community? These events, they're actually relatively rare. So the last time an iceberg this kind of size formed in this region was back in 1998. So for us, it's just a fabulous opportunity to collect more data. That iceberg will now be tracked by the US National Ice Center, partly for research and partly to help protect shipping. And we'll also be using records of satellite data to try and understand the processes that formed it. And those are the kind of data that help us to predict when these things might happen again in future. Interesting. Well, best of luck with it. It sounds like you've got quite the job on your hands. Thanks very much, uh, Dr. Sue Cook from the Australian Antarctic Programme. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Now let's